This is part 156 of ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss binding ASP.NET menu control to a database table. This is continuation to part 155. So please watch part 155 from the ASP.NET tutorial before proceeding with this video. At the moment, this menu control is bound to an XML file. We discussed this in our previous session. In this video, we'll discuss binding this menu control to a database table. And obviously, the first step here is to move this menu data to database tables. And for that purpose, we are going to create these two tables. Notice the table on the left hand side. This table contains the top level menu items. And the top level menu items are home, employee, employer, and admin. And notice that's what this table contains. This is the menu text and this is the URL that we want the user to navigate to when they click on that menu text. And look at the table on the right hand side. This table contains level 2 menu items. So underneath employee, we have upload resume, edit resume, view resume. And notice how these two tables are related using this column parent ID. So this is the foreign key. Look at the parent ID for the first three rows, it's number 2. So these are child items for employee menu item. And along the same lines for employer, 4, 5, and 6 are the child items. How do we know that? Look at the parent ID, it's number 3. And employer ID is number 3. So basically, this column looks up in this table. So pretty straightforward. Now, the first thing here is we need a stored procedure which is going to retrieve data from these two tables. I have already created these two tables. So these are the tables, table, TBL menu items level 1 and TBL menu items level 2. Here is the SQL script to create and populate these tables with some sample data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case if you need it. And look at this. I've created a very simple stored procedure here. All this procedure has got is two select statements um, retrieving data from the two tables. All right. Now, let's flip to Visual Studio. At the moment, this menu control is bound to an XML file. So first of all, let's remove that association. So here we have the menu control. First, we need to get rid of this data source ID attribute from the menu control. And the next thing is to remove these data bindings. And finally, let's get rid of the XML data source control that we used. All right. Now, we need to write some ADO.NET code to retrieve data from the database table. So within the code behind file of the master page, let's include the required using statements. So system.data, we need system.data.sql client and system.configuration. And within web.config file, I already have a connection string that points to SQL Server that's installed on my local machine. So within the code behind file, let's include a private method so private void and let's call this maybe get menu items and now first we need to read the connection string from web.config file for that purpose we are going to make use of configuration manager class dot connection strings of what is the name of the connection string dbcs dot connection string should give us the connection string the next step is to create the SQL connection object and we are going to create the SQL connection object using this connection string. Now, let's create an instance of SQL data adapter. And we want the SQL data adapter to execute this stored procedure, SP get a menu data. Look at this, when we execute it, we get data from these two tables, TBL menu items level one and level two. So we want this stored procedure to be executed. And we want this adapter object to use this connection object that we have created to execute this stored procedure. All right, now let's create a data set object. Let's call it ds equals new data set and fill the data set with data. So what's going to happen when this statement is executed, data from these two tables is now present within this data set. Now, the next very important thing that we need to do is we need to establish the relationship between these two tables in the data set. And to do that, so data set dot relations dot add, we want to add a relationship. Okay, so we are going to use this overloaded 
add method where we can specify the name of the relationship, the parent column and the child column. So let's call the relationship as maybe child rows. And now how are these two tables related? Where is the parent column present? The parent column is nothing but the lookup column. So we are using this value to look up in this table. So this is the parent column and this is the child column. And look at this, when we execute the stored procedure, in which order are we getting the data? Uh, you know, the first table contains the parent items and the second table contains the child items. So within the data set, we have got two tables. And the indexing for tables within the data set is zero based. So data set dot tables of zero would actually give us this table. Okay, so within this table, which column is that? The parent column, ID column. So dot columns of ID. So that's the parent column. And what is the child column? Child column is present in the second table. And the name of the column is parent ID. All right. So we have established the relationship. In a bit, we'll see how we are going to make use of this relationship. Now, the next step is to basically loop through the rows within these two tables and build menu objects dynamically. Because technically, a menu, an ASP.NET menu, is a collection of menu item objects. So let's go ahead and create um, you know, an instance of menu items. But we'll have to do that uh, inside a for each loop because for every row we have to create an instance of menu item object and add that to the menu control. So for each data row and let's call this level 1 data row in data set dot tables of 0 dot rows. So we are basically looping through the parent rows now because look at which table we are looping through tables of 0. That's the parent table which is this table. And when, as we get the rows, what we need to do, we need to create an instance of menu item objects. So menu item, let's call it item equals new menu item. And obviously menu item has got text and navigate URL property. So text equals, so where are we going to get the text for the menu item from this column of this table? So what is the name of the column? Menu text. And we have the data row here, level one data row of menu text is the name of the column and convert that to string. And the next important property is the navigate URL property. And where are we going to get the navigate URL um, value? Again, the column name here is navigate URL. So let's copy this and paste it right there. So navigate URL. All right, so that would give us the parent items, but under employee, we have got child um, items as well. So we need to associate child item objects to this menu item, okay? So what we need to do here technically is, if this row has got a child item, go ahead and retrieve child items from the second table and build child item menu objects and then add them to the parent menu item, okay? so. To get the rows from the second table, what we are going to do here is take level one data row and then we are going to get, look at that, get child rows method and then we specify the name of the relationship. So what is the name of our relation? Child rows. So that should give us all the child rows from the second table here. Okay, and look at the return type of this method. What is it returning? It retur it's returning, you know, an array of data rows. So let's actually store that in a variable of type data row array. And let's call this maybe level two data rows. And now what we need to do, we need to loop through each of this uh, rows and then build menu item objects dynamically again because those are going to be child items for this menu item object. So let's use another for each loop. So for each data row, and let's call this maybe level two 
data row in level 2 data rows collection. And again, a child menu item is also a menu item. So menu item, let's call this child item equals new menu item. And obviously, even the child menu item has got text and navigate URL property. So we need to set that as well. So child item dot text. Where are we going to get the child item text from level two data row? And in this table, you know, these columns are also menu text and navigate URL. So we don't have to change the column names here. So this has to be level two and this has to be child item. Okay, so the most important thing here is to associate this child item menu object to this item. And how do we do that? This menu item object has got child items property. So child items dot add the child item object that we have just created. And then finally, Within this for each loop, what we need to do, we need to add this menu item to the menu control itself. And what is the ID of the menu control? It's menu one. So menu one dot items dot add. So we need to add the item. Okay, so pretty straightforward code. Let's go ahead and run this, but before that we need to actually invoke this method. So let's invoke that in the page load event handler. So get menu items should do all the work for us. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and see if it works in the same way. But now we are actually getting the menu items from a database table instead of from an XML file. Look at that. You know, we are on the home page. Home page is already selected and we discussed that code in our previous session. So if I select admin, we are on admin page and admin menu item is selected. All right. And this is the same code that we discussed just now. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.